I made this statement, I was talking about poverty, and last week I made this statement. And I said, a man that man was never made to live in poverty. Turn with me over to your Bibles to Genesis chapter 1. I got to kind of backtrack. You know, it's kind of like double dutch. You got to get your rhythm together so you can jump in and go. So we're kind of getting our rhythm together. Y'all ready to go with me? We're going to go fast and hard. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 says, Now in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness. Say darkness. darkness. Was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And the Lord said, let there be light. Say, let there be light. Let there be light. And there was light. And verse 4 says, and God saw that the light, saw the light and that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Now, we said that light in the Hebrew is the word or, or O-W-R. And one of the definitions for that word light is the light of prosperity. All right now. All right now. So God created us in prosperity before he created us. He put us in prosperity. That word prosperity is defined as a successful, flourishing, or thriving condition, especially in finances. Now, the opposite of that, so if light is prosperity, then darkness is poverty. And poverty is known as the state or condition of having little to no money, goods, or means of support. Condition of being poor. Now, the definition of darkness is the word obscurity. The root word is obscure. And it is defined as um, not having sight or any other senses, not readily seen, heard, or faint. So he's saying when you're in darkness, you don't have sight. Your senses aren't working right. You can't even hear prosperity. And God said in verse 4, he made sure he separated the light from the darkness. Now, there are some places and areas in this world where darkness and poverty have a stronghold and are ruling the principalities that are in this region. How can you tell where crimes, where there's crime, death, fear, and lack is rampant, then Satan is in full effect And the light of the gospel is not ruling. And that is because the people of God are not walking and operating in their God-given authority. There is a spirit of poverty. You can tell where there's poverty. Because where there's poverty, there's fear. Where there's poverty, people are, women are clutching their purses. Men are constantly watching what's going on. They're very aware of their situation because they know at any given time, something could happen. Poverty is where people have a lack of hope, a lack of resources, a lack of the ability to take care of themselves. And so God has said, first of all, I have to separate you from that. I have to separate you from that and put you in a place where prosperity is how you're supposed to live. That's why men doesn't function well in this. Over in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, it says this in the Amplified. What I've realized is there's a whole bunch of fear in a place where there's poverty. That's why there's more guns in poverty. 
locked doors, extra alarm systems. But 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 in the Amplified says this. For God did not give us the spirit of timidity or cowardice or fear, but he has given us a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and of a sound and of sound judgment and personal discipline, the abilities that result in calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. He said, first of all, those things that come with poverty, I didn't give that to you. That's why you can never tell me I'm being holy or humble when I take a vow of poverty. That's not something God gave me. He didn't give you that spirit, but he gave you the spirit of power, love, and of a sound, well-balanced mind. Not only did God create us in this light, he said over in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, he says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. He said, you are that light. Where you go, prosperity should go with you. You have the ability to take a gale and turn it into a garden of Eden. Because of this light that lives in you, Todd. You were created in that atmosphere. That's the culture in which you breathe. Yes, yes. Yes. Yes, sir. John chapter 8, verse 12 says this. Then Jesus spoke to them again saying, I am the light of the world. And he who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. That same light of life that we were created with. So I'm the light of the world. If you follow me, that darkness, that poverty, that fear, that lack won't be a part of you. Trying to help you see poverty shouldn't be okay and it shouldn't be your norm. You should not be comfortable living in and around poverty. When you have the light of prosperity in you. Amen. Over in John chapter 9 verse 5 in the New King James it says this. Jesus said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. How many of you are Christians? How many of you are part of the body of Christ? So he's saying, as long as I'm in the world, you are the light of the world. So as long as there's saints, as long as there's Christians, we are the light of the world. The light of what? Prosperity. Pointing to the abundance of God. Displaying the magnificence of God. Familiar, well-known of the opulence of God. Now we, as the rightful ruling authorities of this earth, need to begin to put things back in proper order. And to start to declare and decree what we and God want to see on this earth and put it back in place. One of the things I notice is when people get around poverty, they close their mouth or they speak more strength to it. This neighborhood is bad. Oh, we in the killing neighborhood now. This is the high crime zip code. 
what are we as people who have the uh, life and death in our tongue, what are we saying? We want Milwaukee to change, but we're giving it strength to get worse. It's changing. It's getting worse. Matthew chapter 16, verse 9 in Amp says, I give you the keys, the authority of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind, forbid, or declare to be improper and unlawful on earth will have already been bound in heaven, and whatever you loose, permit, declare lawful on earth will have already been loosed in heaven. So he's saying, what you say is okay is what we'll say is okay. So as long as we as the saints are okay with this, God is saying, I can't change. Here's the thing. God gave us the authority over the earth. And whatever we do with it is what will be done with it. So if we're okay with this condition, he's like, if that's what you want, I can't get back and say, get out of the way. I'll do this from now on. If that's what we're okay with, then either I can't, you declared it, I can't change it in heaven. You locked it up on earth, so I got to lock it up in heaven. But let me loose on earth. We forget that we don't have to accept bad service. You forgot who I am. No, 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 wait a minute. I forgot who I am. I forgot who I am. Wait a minute. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and he gave it to men. So if he gave it to me, If he gave it to me, and I'm to rule this earth, then let me rule it how I want it. And if he started this earth off in the garden, then he expected the garden to expand. Over in Psalms 107, verses 20 and 21 in the New King James, it says this. And he sent his word to heal them and delivered them from their destructions. Verse 21 says, Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. He sent his word to heal them. We don't have to live in an area to send healing to that area. We don't, we, we, don't have to, we don't have to be in the area to have healing go in that area, to have deliverance go in that area, to send prosperity in that area, to send life back into that area. We can open up our mouths and say, prosperity, go! I'm at a place where I'm seeing more that God is saying, listen, how long will you put up with this? How long will this be okay with you? How long will you suffer things you don't have to suffer? I believe God is saying to us as a saints of God, looking at Milwaukee, he's looking at the saints of God and asking y'all this question, can these bones live? And let me say this, it's not a business, it's not a government, it's not a It's not a legislation that's going to fix this. 
It is going to be the saints of God standing up in the authority that they've been given by God and releasing the light of prosperity in this city. That's the only thing that's going to change it. That's it. Because if a business changes it, then the business owns it. So today, I stand in my place, and we are getting ready to declare some things over this city and over our lives. We are going to use our mouth as a change agent this morning. Y'all ready to make some declarations over our city? Okay, let's stand to our feet. Come on, stand to our feet. And I want you to say this from a place of this city belongs to me. How would you feel if someone came in your house and started smoking, drinking, throwing a party in your house, writing, spray painting graffiti all over your walls, and breaking your stuff? Would you go, well, you know, they're guests? Or would you understand, wait a minute, this belongs to me, and you will not do that in my house. Look at your neighbor and say, Milwaukee is my house. Milwaukee is my house. All right, now, say this. Today I stand in my place, Today I stand in my place. And, operate in and operate in the same position that you originally gave Adam. In Genesis 1 and 26, in Genesis 1 and 26 God, said, God said, let us, let us make, man make man in our image, in our image. And, according and according to our likeness, and let them have dominion. Them have dominion. That, means that means authority. That means power. That means, power. That means, rule. That means rule over the fish of the sea, over the, fish of the, sea. Over the birds of the air. Over the cattle, over, the cattle. Over, all the earth. over all the earth, and everything, and everything that, creeps that creeps on this earth. On this earth. That, means that means I have, I have authority, authority over creepy things. In John, In John chapter, one, chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. It says this, in him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Father, I thank you that I am the light, and darkness and lack cannot compete with the light of prosperity, light of prosperity. That, is that is in me. So I shine, so I shine. Everywhere, I go. everywhere I go, bright with this light. With this light. Poverty, Poverty does, not does not scare me because your word says, your word says for, God for God has not given me the spirit of fear, spirit of fear. but of power, but of power. And, of and of love of a sound mind. And I speak in agreement with John 10 and 10 in the Amplified that said the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you might have and enjoy life in abundance to the full until it overflows. I speak light and darkness. I speak, I speak joy for sadness, love for hate, love for hate. Repair, for repair for brokenness, repentance for rebellion, repentance for rebellion. Blind, eyes blind eyes open, deaf ears open, deaf ears open. Lame, walking. lame walking, hopefulness for the hopeless, hope for the hopeless. Strength 
for the tired. You told us to pray. And we are in authority. So we declare that the liars will be exposed by the truth. The oppressors, plotters, schemers will be removed and replaced with righteousness. Education will rise higher. Resources will come to Milwaukee now. The city belongs to God. And God, we give you permission to move in this city, to repair the hearts of this city, to infuse hope in the people in this city. For faith to rise in this city. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen to me. This is how we're going to change this. We have to start speaking life. And then we have to start being the light. Stop being afraid of the darkness. Stop being afraid of, I don't go in that neighborhood. You need to go in that neighborhood. If darkness is ruling, light needs to show up and say, wait a minute. I need to ask you a question. How many of you have ever went into a completely dark room, turned on the light, and there was a fight between the light and the darkness? I mean, there was a battle. They were, they were fighting to see who could, who could have the power. What happened? When the light showed up, darkness flee. Wasn't no fight. Wasn't no battle. It was light be and light was. And here's the thing. And it was good. Keeping it 100 Men's Conference 2018. Men, mark your calendar and be a part of the movement. 200 strong. This year's theme, me, winning. Gents, come and learn how to win in your relationships. Win in your career. Win in ministry. Win in your finances. Plan to attend on Saturday, October 13th for Real Talk Session. Getting it in Q&A and Power Worship Night. Special life coaches include Skip Henderson. Chip Brim and Marlon Locke. Guys, we got you. Register today by calling 414-962-0600. www.worldoutreachbtc.org. Keeping it 100 Men's Conference 2018. Guys, we got you. It's a sound that is a stick in the devil's ears. When he hears it, he knows the people of God are around and that they mean business and worship and war.
and never spread the good news about how you're being cared for. You may not be in the pulpit, but you're well cared for. And your life speaks volumes to those outside the sheepfold. I'm saying, ladies, you got the power to shift your family. You got the power to shift your neighborhood. You've got the power. And I ain't seeing you move. But one thing I will do is I am fixing my eyes on the prize. And it may not be today. It may not be tomorrow. But I know that you're going to come through. And when you do, I'm going to be ready. You go on to tell him that he prepares a table before you every single day in the presence of your enemy. When the bugs and the flies came, he anointed your head with oil and your cup ran over. And every time you go out and come in, goodness and mercy is following you all the days of your life and you're dwelling in the house of the Lord forever. That is the gospel. That's the good news. That's what he wants your life to say. So you gotta come forth to do that. Wow, what a powerful message. But all the messages we do are designed for you to get to know Christ. So if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, it's so important to us that you have the opportunity. So if you could pray this prayer after me and you will have eternal life. Father God, we thank you so much for this opportunity for this individual to come to know you. I thank you, Father, that they've accepted you as being real. You said, Father, that if you confess me as Lord, I'll save you. So I appreciate so much, Father, for you saving my life, for now you being the Lord of my life, Father, for you leading me and guiding me. Thank you for sending me to a church that will help me to learn, to grow, and to develop. I give you glory and honor for this. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, if you said that and you believe that, you are saved. So do me a favor. Send us an email or send us a note or even give us a call. All of our information will be right up under you. Thank you so much for being a part of the World Outreach family. God bless you. We love you. Thanks so much for spending time with us today and allowing us to come into your home and you also coming into ours. We really need your help. We would love to have more partners because partnership helps this broadcast go out to more people. And we want you to be a part of changing lives. So if you could, give. Give with the understanding that this message and this gospel will go throughout the land. So thank you so much for being a partner with World Outreach and Bible Training Center. And for more information and even wanting to get this message, go to our website at www.worldoutreachbtc.org. Again, that's www.worldoutreachbtc.org. Thank you so very much.